Hello, peeps! Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. So, today's video is one I am very excited about. I've always liked swatch videos. I think they're very calming and I really enjoy watching them. They're really zen. And so I thought um, I should swatch my Copic markers because it's gonna be fun and then I, ha I can have a swatch card which I can take to the art store and this way I can know how many Copics do I have, which ones do I have and I can buy Copics more efficiently and not buy duplicates of what I already have which is a bummer because these things are super expensive and you don't want to buy duplicates because money issues, you know? Yeah. So that's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a swatch video, basically. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into the video right now. So first of all, we have my beautiful, wonderful 2072A Copic Marker set. This was a Christmas present a long time ago, which I'm super grateful for because these things are expensive. So yeah, this is my 72A color set. This is the first ever set I got, the first copy markers I got. And then I have these um, group of copies that I purchased separately in various occasions during a long time because these things are expensive as fuck, you know? So we have the 2072A color set and the separate um, copics. So pretty. As you can see, we have two types of copic markers. We have the normal copic markers, which are the square ones, and these have a chisel nib and a fine liner tip. As you can see, these are the most expensive kind, I think because they can carry a lot more ink than the other ones and thus they last longer. And these are the Kobe sketch markers which have a chisel nib in one end and a brush nib, luscious brush nib on the other end. And these are slightly more affordable and then we also have another kind of copper marker, which is the most affordable one, which is the Copic Chow marker. And this is not available in as many colors as the others, and it runs out of ink um, quicker than the others, but as a sketch marker has a brush nib and a chisel nib, and it's just the same quality as the others, just that carries less ink and gets, you know, runs out of ink easier, but it's the most affordable option if you want to invest in copics or you want to try them for the first time I seriously advise you to buy these ones because it's not such a big expenditure and there's other also the copic wide markers which I do not have but they are like a water wider chisel nib and a fine liner tip so let's get swatching I'm gonna swatch them in this notebook which is a moleskin that has a kind of pressed watercolor paper, I think it's 200 gram, and um, with these markers, markers as they are, are alcohol based, you need to use a thicker paper or special marker paper because if not they bleed and they transfer through the other pages and stuff, and that's why I always, just in case, I put between um, the page I'm working on and the other surface below a um, sheet of paper in so they don't bleed or anything into the other page and so on. So I'm gonna start um, swatching the 72A set. I'm gonna start from the top row from left to right and then I'm gonna go down. So let's get swatching, shall we? So first we have E09 Burnt Sienna, which is a bright um, warm tone brown. And uh, with all the chisel nibs and wider stripes, I'm gonna layer so you can see the difference in color payoff that you can get by layering the Copic. So like you literally get three markers in one because 
you layering you can achieve such different depths and uh, in color basically so that was burnt sienna this is E29 which is burnt umber which is a slightly darker more cool toned brown and in the end I'm gonna insert um, photographs of the swatch pages with the numbers and names so in case you want to purchase some of the color of these colors you can um, easily uh, see the numbers at the end of the video this is a color named sand which is a cool tone uh, a slightly skin tone brown I really like this one it's like a camel kind of a camel tone now we have sepia which is e37 which is uh, also a warm tone it's more neutral and it's slightly darker than sand it's like four tones darker um, and yeah this is really nice as well copy browns are really nice they're really victim now we have e34 which is named clay which is a really cool tone brown it also it's really grayish it's really good for shadowing stuff, you know. And then we are getting to the grays. We have cool grays and warm grays. There are also neutral grays, but I don't have any. Um, they didn't come with the set. But we have C1, which is cool gray. And then we have the rest of the cool grays in this set, which are C3, C5, C7, and C9. You have, of course, C2, C4, C6 and so on, but these are not in this set and I haven't purchased them separately so I don't have them. But these are a really good basis for shadowing and stuff. Um, the good thing about Copic is it has a huge range of color to choose from, so you will never get poured. In fact, there is, I, I don't know how many colors they have, it's crazy. And they, all the colors are not available in every type of marker, if I'm not mistaken. I think the Copic, the regular Copics, are the ones that have more shades available. And I don't know if the sketch markers are available in all the colors that regular Copics have. I would have to check that but that's for another video so yeah you can see here the like the the darker cool gray tones and we get to the c9 which is pretty pretty dark really blackish gray it is so satisfying to swatch like pretty colors on a page it gives me so much peace of mind it's like therapy after a stressing day of work. It's like the best thing ever. And this was like really needed because every time I go to the art store with the intention of buying copics, I never buy them because I cannot freaking remember how many copics I have and which do I have. And so I don't want to spend money on something I already have. So I end up buying nothing. And it's really annoying because I really want to expand my copy collection. But you know, I always forget the tones that I have because there are so fucking many tones. Thank you Copic. And now uh, as you can see we are onto the warm grays. Again there is war a double warm gray one, two, no, one, three, five, seven, and nine. Also there are like the two, four, blah blah blah, but I don't have them because they are not in this set. And as you can see, there's a huge difference between the cool tones and the warm tones. And it always, like, it doesn't cease to amaze me the way these things layer and blend with each other, which is amazing to me. I've always, I don't know, I got obsessed with these a long way back, watching this girl on YouTube called Miss Carrie J, which I think I discovered her on DeviantArt, but I was obsessed with her coloring technique and so that's why I bought Copics because I thought they were so cool. And, um, and this is the Colorless Blender, which is basically a transparent marker that is supposed to help you blend your colors better. I have never used it. I mean, I have used it, but I don't usually do because I find Copics blend really well on their own. But if I feel I need a little extra help, I use it. And then we have the two black markers, which 
are the black and the special black i have never found out the difference to be honest to me they look the same the only thing is that my special black has like burst somehow and the chisel nib is all busted and gross and sticky i don't know why um but yeah as you can see here it's like the ink has exploded and i have tried to clean it several times and i don't know what happens but that's that and that is the first row of colors finished i really like this color scheme i think it's so pretty i love neutrals then we have the blue and green row and we are gonna start with G17 which is for a screen a really pretty um, dark green which is a little it has like a little blue undertone and then we have G21 which is lime green which is not really lime it's more like hospital green you know not really limeish but these names don't usually have that much sense you know but it Nonetheless, it's a really pretty color. And then we have ocean green, not really oceany, if you ask me. It's more like pine green, I think, but really pretty also. And these colors, I never like, I'm never gonna be like, it's, I'm always gonna be impressed with the way these things layer. It's amazing. Then we have olive, which is like a khaki green. I think we are done with the greens for this row. Now onto the bluish colors, and the first one is gonna be blue green. Really, um, <laughs> really extravagant name, quote unquote. Super sarcastic there, in case you didn't notice. Um, and then this is like a tealish, turquoiseish green i don't know how to say it and then we have cool shadow which is a really 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 light like aqua blue you can barely see it on the page but the thing is that um uh wh while they are drier like the drier these things the, the the strokes are on paper the more opaque you can see the tone because it has a lot of alcohol, so when it's wet, it's like more translucent, and when it dries out, it gets more opaque. That was the color aqua, and this is the color teal blue, which is kind of a grayish blue. I don't find it very teal. I think the other one was more teal, but then again, sometimes these names don't make that much sense. Japanese people, you know. This is Process Blue, which is a uh, very cyan tone, B05. And in another video I'm gonna make, which is gonna be all about Copics, I'm gonna talk about the way they are named and coded and a bunch of stuff you need to know to work with Copics, so stay tuned for that. And this here is Peacock Blue, which is slightly darker than the other color, Process Blue. I don't know if you can appreciate the difference, but um, on paper it's like it's not really different, but because one is BO5 and the other BO6, so they're really close uh, in color. And this is B14 Light Blue. And lastly, in this column is B23 Thalo Blue, which is a really weird color name. I don't know how to really pronounce it. <laughs> and um, continuing with the blues, and we're finishing up this second row. This is B26 Cobalt Blue, and next, my favorite tone of blue ultramarine which is super like electric it's like an electric blue and i love it it's super pigmented and opaque and yeah it's one of my faves honestly yeah super sexy really sexy color and then we have b23 
32, sorry, pale blue, which is like a sky blue, a baby blue, one like people used to associate with baby boys and paint their nurseries with, you know, this classic baby blue. And then B34, manganese blue, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, but we're going with it, so manganese blue, everybody. Which is a oh, grey stone blue. I'm running out of options on how to describe these colors and my throat is starting to hurt of talking that much. Um, well, then this one was Antwerp blue and next in the line it's Prussian blue which is a darker blue. And that's all for the second row of the set and the blues of the entire set. And we're moving on to the third row, starting with the oranges. YR14 Caramel, which is a very light orange. It looks kind of neon on camera, but it's not neon at all. Um, really pretty color. Then we have YR18 Sanguine, which is a reddish orange and again um, it looks different on paper than in camera but it's a little bit darker like on paper then we have yellow ochre YR23 everybody I don't know why they're um, showing up so neon in here these colors Then we have pale sepia. And the other yellows which don't really show up that well because they're super light. We have yellow, pale yellow, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow and buttercup yellow which range from Y06 to Y21. Everybody. These are all, all the yellows on the set. Oh, and then we have mustard, but that's being swatched on the next page. As you can see, the yellows are not that opaque and they don't show so um, strongly on paper. But as I said, once they dry out, they're gonna be more opaque and they're gonna show more. So there's that. Now to the next page and continuing with the yellows on the third row. This is mustard. I don't know why these like um, warm tones show up this neon. Um, but you know, we'll see. And these are also greens, but they're like yellow toned greens. So this is called, let me check, um, yellow green. So, you know, different and original. This is chartreuse, which is YG13. Really cool tone green. I don't know what this is. Got uh, this is I don't think this has a yellow undertone, but oh well. And then we have new leaf, which is YG23. Uh, we have uh, um, YG991, which is putty 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 putty. I don't know how to pronounce this. Putty, uh, which is like a brownish, yellowish, khaki-ish green <laughs> and then we have pale olive uh, which is slightly um well it's um 
lighter than olive from the other row and then we have Spanish olive which is a darker <laughs> uh, color slightly darker color and is YG97 so two tones darker and then YG99 which is marine green then again two tones darker than Spanish olive and to finish up with the green we have G07 which is Nile green which is kind of similar to Horace no it's not similar mistaken sorry which is a darker um, yellow toned green and then up to the last row which is the violets pinks reds and some um, oranges we have violet blue BV 08 and then lavender which is V06 and then we are onto the last violet of the group which is V09 which is called violet this is not a lot as aesthetic it plays in I think as the last page but it looks interesting nonetheless and then we have shock pink which is rv04 which is a super neon pink then fuchsia and then pink and then deep magenta on the top of the next row these are the rvs which are the red violets and then we have rv19 which is red violet again so original <laughs> then we have the reds and peachy tones this is flesh which i love to use for skin tones and blushes and stuff then we have r8 which is vermilion which is a reddish um orangey red i don't know why these show up so neon this is way darker on paper then we have cadmium red uh, which is r27 and then another red violet which i don't know what the hell is doing here i think there were um yeah, this was not on its place, but it's RV29, which is crimson, which shouldn't be here. Uh, it should be with the RVs, but oh well. And then we have R32, which is peach, and then there comes carmine, which is R37, and that's the last of the reds. These two, this is peach, and the next one is carmine. I think there's a good proportion of um, warm, tones, warm tones to cool tones in this um, set, which is nice to have. But I feel like I'm missing a little bit more reds and less violets. Then we are on to the um, oranges. The one before was YR00, uh, which was powder, powder pink. This is chrome chrome orange which again is much darker on paper than it shows then we have cadmium orange which again it's showing super light and to finalize the set we have chinese orange chinese orange i don't know how i pronounce anything i'm sorry and that's the end of the 72c 72a copic marker set and now on to the ones I have purchased individually. These are some uh, regular Copics and some Sketch and some uh, Chow, which we're gonna swatch right now. This is E O O O O, so four times zero, which is floral white, which is a super super light nude for super light skin tones um, you can barely see it on paper but when it dries out it shows more this is E000 which is pale fruit pink another super light skin tone color and then we have the double O um, E00 which is skin white again for super light skin colors Then we have E04, which is sleep lipstick neutral, which is like a mauve color, really um, cool toned. And then 
we have E21 which is baby skin pink again a lighter skin color nude then we have brick beige which is similar to sand but slightly cooler toned and then we have E70 which is ash rose which is a super cool gray tone pink it's more gray than pink but it has a pink undertone to it Then we have E95, which is flesh pink. It's similar to flesh, but it's more orangey toned. It's also similar to powder pink. Uh, so it's in these um, uh, rose nude uh, tones range. And then we have blush, which is really similar to peach and pink from the uh, 72A set. Then we have coral, which is our 35 which is close to cadmium red or crimson and then we have garnet uh, I don't know what happened to it this brush nib. It's like kind of busted But this is garner which is like a darker tone than carmine in in fact is two tones darker than carmine and this is tender pink which is um, Between pink and deep magenta. It's RV 13 then we have the last of these colors. This is RV34, which is dark pink, which is again kind of a mauve toned pink with uh, violet, violet undertones. These would be three tones lighter than carmine. And then we have V12, which is pale lilac, VV04, which is blue berry. And then we have BV13, which is hydrangea blue. The BV04 is slightly darker than BV13, as you can see. And last but not least, we have G24, which is willow, which is um, uh, close to lime green, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's three tones darker than lime green. And then I'm swatching the Copic Chow markers, which are the C1, C3, C5, and C9 in black. Um, these are cool gray tones, and they are exactly the same as the Copic, regular Copic um, cool gray tones and black. So, wow, these were a lot of swatches everybody i hope you enjoyed the video i really had fun doing this i love doing swatches um please if you liked it give it a thumbs up subscribe subscribe comment down below you know the drill with that i hope this was useful um and it gave you an idea about copy colors and maybe gave you an idea of some shades you want to purchase and yeah i'll see you on the next video more videos are coming up i promise i'm working on it and i'm see you i'll see you on the next one bye